Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Coding with Sejas. This is the 8th video in the UFI series. If this is the first video you're watching in the series, do click this link to access the entire playlist. That way, you can access this training from the starting and have a better understanding when we continue in this video. In the last video, we learned about internationalization. We learned how to make our application accessible for users from different demography. Also, how to provide multi-language support in our application. Today, we are learning a crucial and a very important topic. Component. So what is this component? A component is the independent and reusable part of an application. Until now, we have written our code to access the resource relative to our index.html. From now, we will access our resource relative to component. This architectural change enables us to use our application in a more flexible environment than a index.html like a Fury Launchpad. So what is this Fury Launchpad? A Fury Launchpad, as you see in the screen over here, it's like a dashboard which contains a suite of application which a user have access to. And we provide access to these application using something called tiles. So if you see here, this is an example of a Fury Launchpad. You can see a different tile called My Sales Overview, My Inbox, My Timesheet and Lunch Menu. These are tiles and what you see here is a Launchpad. So like this, we will be able to develop many application which does not need an index to HTML because the Launchpad plays a role of index to HTML where the bootstrapping happens. So let's quickly we'll jump into a demo. So we have the code from the previous video in a web app folder. I have created a new folder called internationalization and moved the previous code into the that folder. This code have been pushed into a GitHub and the link to the GitHub is there in the description. So before we create component, let's make some changes in our application. So initially, let me open a terminal window and serve this folder. Let me open it. I'll bring the folder here. Let me open the web app folder. Before me going to that, let me show you what is the archive folder does. So the archive folder, you can see each demo here. So for example, we have seen a demo of view model. So when you click here, you can open the web app folder here, get the demo for the that particular video. So this was the video of navigating to the second screen. Now let's go back to our web app folder. So we have a simple application which is having a resource model and show hello which shows a message. And after changing this, nothing much happens because the message comes from the internationalization or the IATN text. So the change which I'm going to make here is just a restructuring. So I'll create a new folder here called views and another folder called controller. So I have to move my controller to controller folder and view to my view folder. And let me go back and refresh and this will make our application to fail. Why? Because it will not be able to find the views or anything. The first error is that it cannot find the landing page. Let me go and correct it. So it's no more coming from app. It's coming from app.view dot landing page. The next error will be it is unable to find the controller. So for that, we'll open the view and we'll change here its app dot controller dot landing page. Also, we need to make sure that in the controller also we have rewritten it app dot controller dot landing page. With this in place, let's refresh our application and we should get the application ready. So now let me go ahead and create a file called component.js adjacent to index.html. It's component 
dot js so what does it contain we will use the same syntax of umd sap ui dot define where my dependency is nothing but sap slash ui slash core slash ui component i get it and i'll extend it so ui component dot extent i give nothing i just extend and save it have to return it some returning so like our controller a component also have some lifecycle methods so the first method we need to call is init So when you are creating a component, a framework will automatically called init method. But it is also obligatory for us to call the init method of the superclass, which is UI component. So I'll call it UI component dot prototype dot init dot apply this comma arguments. If you have learned JavaScript, you'll know about apply and what is arguments. If you have some questions, kindly watch some videos on JavaScript apply method and JavaScript bind method and JavaScript call method to have a good understanding about those JavaScript methods. So with this done, let's refresh our application and there won't be any change because we haven't used the component yet. So before loading this, we have to make some additional configurations. So a component is the place where we have application settings. So the first settings is under metadata and we have to provide some interfaces. The first interface is which I'm going to provide is SAP dot UI dot core dot i async content creation so this is responsible for loading our views asynchronously when it is requested so we are talking about views so where do we specify our root view until now we have seen our root view specified in index.html under the xml view dot create method now we will move it to component js we save it i'll come here and i have to specify the root view would be over here the first thing is the view name specify this also in double quotes the view name is in dot cjars dot uifi dot app dot view dot landing page we have to specify the type so the type is nothing but xml type and I need to provide an ID for this root view. I'll provide it as app. So saving it. I'll go back here and refresh. So we have only made some changes in the component. We haven't used it yet. So first thing what? I'll remove this from here. And I'll import our component here. For that I need SAP slash UI slash core slash component container so we are not going to instantiate a view here instead we are instantiating a component so we need a component container to contain it so after getting the component container i'll just remove this so we'll create a new component container with some settings it's nothing but the name of the container which will be in dot jars dot uifi dot app we need to provide some settings so we need to provide an id for this component so let me give it as demo and additionally i just need to give set the async flag which i'll be set to true 
So does it really make return a container? No. So we have to place it in the in the content of our index.html. So let's go and refresh. And it tried to load component, but it didn't. And that is because of some issues in the we have to specify everything in double quotes. Because it takes a JSON object and we have to be very clear when we are providing the JSON object. Okay, the metadata is in place. So the error we made is that we haven't given any name for this component. So we have to give a name which is in dot ujas dot ui5 dot app dot component. So we have to specify this name because that is how this component is identified in the landing page. So in this index.js, you can see here in.cjas.ui5.app and it searches for a component with that name. So we have to specify app.component over here. With this in place, let me refresh. And we have our same app here. Now we'll make some other changes to this app that we have some resource model some default models like some JSON data we have here called message and we'll move everything to our component JS because those are things which doesn't get reinitialized every time a resource model one set should be available in the application until the life cycle of the application. So we will move it. So I'll take the resource model from here. Cut it. I'll go to component JS and I'll add resource model and in init I have to create an instance of it so I'll go here I get it here cut it and go to component I'll remove the get view it is directly this dot get model i18n also, we will move the JSON model from here. So we'll take this off from here and we will be bringing it over here. So I have the JSON model and the binding mode. So I'll go to landing page. I'll copy these items from here. I'll make it empty from here. Paste it. I'll just format it. Then I'll remove the get view from here. It's directly set model M data. And we have to remove some code from here. Like we do not have these items anymore. It's a simple controller. And let's refresh this and see for any errors. Yeah. We have one error which is JSON model is not defined. So that is because let's go to the component JS. We have SAP UI dot JSON model over here and we have to add it over here. And we have one more called binding mode. I'll copy and I'll paste it over here. I'll come back and refresh. So done. We have successfully set up a component for our application. So now with this, we will be able to reuse or embed this application into any launchpad because we are no more dependent on a index.html file. So if you look at index.html file, we can directly it calls index and index is calling a component container. So you can create a component container with this web app folder without even having an index.html and admin our application into any launchpad using a tile. We will learn about launchpad tiles everything in later videos. So guys, 
let's sum up for today so what we have done is we created a simple application we organized the application using different folders like view controller and iatnn file we will be also creating more folders in coming videos and we have created something called component adjacent to index.html and we have rearranged every resources with respect to our component js so everything is relative to component js in component js we have instantiated our one-time instantiations like resource model json model setting the data to the model and we reuse this model across the application if this is something which is very interesting for you i would love to subscribe this channel you can click the subscribe button right below this video See you guys in the next video.